Hey everybody, it's Dalton. Um, I started a deal a few weeks ago on Bass Basics. Uh, first video was on rod, reel, line. Second video was on baits and how I store them. Today is going to be on the most difficult thing there is in bass fishing, and that's finding bass. Sometimes bass can be hard to find. I have a number of ways that I find bass that I'd like to share with you. I'm going to have to put my uh, reading glasses on because I did take a few notes and I, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, one of the ways to find bass is exactly what's behind me here and that's bluff walls. Bluff walls are a, a good way to find them. Um, they do tend to run a little bit deep, but if you get on the edges of the bluff walls, there's little rocky platforms and a lot of times I'm able to set a bait, say pitching a drop shot or maybe a Nico rig or a small swim bait. And I'm able to kind of set it up against that, that little platform on the wall. And a lot of times bass will just simply be uh, on those ledges. Well, I, I guess I wrote big enough. I don't need my, my, uh, my glasses. So bluff walls are, uh, they can be rocky bluff walls or they can be, be bluff walls of just dirt and mud. But they do tend to hold bait and bass. Another thing is flats. Flats are really good for bass fishing. Simply a flat is where the land is semi-flat and it comes out and it extends out into the water so you can be a hundred yards offshore and still only be in four to ten foot of water. Uh, flats are really good. I, I like um, you know fishing jigs, swim baits, top water, spinner baits, crank baits. There's a lot of ways to uh, to fish flats but flats do hold bass. The one of the things you're going to want to remember about a flat though is it has a drop off. At some point in that flat it's going to drop off or break off into deeper water. Definitely fish that area. I catch a lot of fish at that little break. Another great way to catch fish is rocks. This is a very rocky lake. Uh, this particular lake has no vegetation, a little bit but not much. It doesn't have lily pads and reeds and lots of grass but it has a lot of rocks. I like fishing little football jigs and rocks, uh, again swim baits, uh, shallow crank baits, square bills are really good. And always remember where there's rocks in, in a rocky lake, bait and bass are going to hang around there. Something I always harp on that I think is really important is isolated cover. What I mean by that is something all by itself. It could be a dock. You could be, you could see a whole row of docks and then you see this dock all by itself. I would go and fish the dock all by itself before I went and fished the row of docks. Oftentimes that isolated dock or that isolated cover will hold bass. Uh, rocks can be isolated cover. Wood. Wood some of your best isolated cover. A log in the water. Uh, you know, a stick up. A, a, a tree stump. Uh, little branches sticking out of the water and it's all by itself can be a great place to uh, to have bass. Riprap, uh, just a group of rocks all grouped up together. Uh, Riprap is a very known place for bass to be at and probably the number one bait that for me as far as riprap is just a square bill crankbait. You get me around riprap and I'm going to throw a square bill because a square bill works really good around that, that type of structure or cover. And, and you, you know, but there's other baits. You can throw weightless Senkos and, and there's all kinds of things you can use. But riprap holds bass. Steep banks and ledges. Now, if you're, you know, if you're a shoreline fisherman, find one of those steeper banks where you can cast out and drag something up. Basically, that steep bank is a ledge. Now there's ledges that come from the shoreline into the water. If you have a boat, there's ledges out in the water where you could use your graph. You could find those ledges and you could drag things up those ledges. I mean, one of the things that's really good if it's a deep ledge is a Carolina rig. Steep banks and ledges are a great place to catch them. Coves. Coves come in many forms. Right now I'm sitting in a cove. I'm not sure how far you can see behind me, but way back there is a cove. So I've got the main lake way out there, and I've branched off into a cove. So coves are another area, especially in the fall, that what happens is a lot of these bass will chase those baits back into coves to trap them so they can eat them. So coves can be a great way to, uh, to find bass. Points. Um, 
points are one of the number one ways. If you're having a hard time catching uh, fish in, in a, any particular day, you could run points all day long and you're going to find them. They're not going to be on every single point, but they will be on some. And what points are is they're kind of, again, I call them little highways for bait. They'll come around the points, they'll get in front of the point, come back around the other side, and those bass will hold up there to feed on them. So when I'm fishing a point, I will, um, you know, I'll just fish all around it, the front of it, the sides of it. And remember, points don't only have to be rock or land. They can be vegetation as well. You can have a grass point, or you can have a point where you have a lot of reeds, and they just kind of come out into a point. Any type of point, a lot of times you're going to find bass. Of course, vegetation. Uh, this lake right here is an open lake, and uh, when I first started fishing this lake, I was kind of intimidated because I'm a largemouth bass fisherman. That's how I started off. Shallow water, fishing two to four feet in heavy cover with heavy line dragging them out. I came out to this lake and I had to learn a lot. A lot about when you don't have a lot of vegetation, you can come out here, you can fish much, much deeper. I've caught bass out here up to 55 foot of water. And uh, I wasn't comfortable with that before, but I've got no problem now fishing that depth if I think that's where they are. But anytime you have vegetation, you're looking for things like shade, overhang trees, uh, little stuff sticking out of the water, stuff that's all by itself. You know, you can have a, a whole bunch of grass on the shoreline and all of a sudden you just have a bunch of reeds and it kind of sticks out like a little point. You're going to want to fish that kind of stuff. So vegetation, just look for things that are different. And uh, Navionics. Uh, Navionics, I think it's their chart. Uh, something chart, I'll have to write that down for you, or chart viewer, I believe that is. I'll link you to Navionics. Now, Navionics is a great place to learn about a lake you don't know anything about. Um, the pictures I'm showing you are, are basically the layout out of the lake that I'm at today. And what happens is that, you know, as you learn to read that map, you're going to find little drop-offs, you're going to find points, you're going to find deep ledges, little underwater islands. Um, shallow water where there's timber in the water. Uh, not every lake is mapped out by, by Navionics. I know they make little chips. You can put it in a fish finder. It'll let you know where you are on the lake, the depths and everything. Or you can just get online or use your cell phone, get a Navionics app, and check out the lake that way. It's a great way, particularly if you don't know a lake. Another way to find fish. I harp on this. Birds. When you see active birds, you need to go check it out. The birds that I look for are loons, um, herons, pelicans, seagulls. Uh, you know, the lakes that I fish are not that far from the ocean, so the pelicans and seagulls will come into these lakes and they'll swoop down eating bait fish. All four of these type of birds, they all eat the same thing bass do. They eat the little bait fish, so it's really important that you watch the bird activity on any lake. My favorite of all is a heron. If I see a heron on the shoreline kind of stalking around or he's got his feet in the water looking down, I'm going to go fish there because I know he's found bait. A couple of side issues here as far as how to find bass. Understand the food source in whatever lake you're fishing. What are the bass feeding on? In this particular lake, I know they feed on little baby frogs when they jump in the water or they'll feed on, I don't know, maybe there's some salamanders out here. I've never seen them. I don't know if they're out here or not. But there are two baits that I know for sure. Number one, there's shad. There's a lot of bait fish. So I'm going to take a lot of my baits and I'm going to try to mimic those shad. The second are crawdads. That's where your jigs come in or your, or your, uh, your hula grubs. Dragging baits that look like little bitty crawdads or bigger crawdads because this lake has crawdads. It has bait fish. I'm very familiar with the food source out here. If you're not familiar with your lake, get online and do a search. Try to go to a bait shop. What kind of food source does that lake have? Does it have crawdads, bait fish, bluegill, sunfish, red ears, um, salamanders, water dogs, gobies? There's all kinds of things that bass feed on. Try to find out as much as you can about the, the food sources in that lake and it will help you catch more bass. And then of course, another important thing is to know your seasons, your depths, your water temperatures, what bass do 
at different times of the year, and they do things at different times of the year. My advice to you is uh, there's a lot of articles online about seasons. I'm going to give you one to start with, and I'll link you to it. Kevin Van Dam is one of the best bass fishermen in the world, always has been for a lot of years. He has a little simple starter thing for you. If you're not used to looking at seasons and temperatures and that kind of stuff and what to throw, it's called KVD Six Season Bass Guide. And what he does is he takes you through just a small article of taking you through the post spawn, the spawn, you know, pre spawns, um, summertime, wintertime, springtime, you know, all these different seasons that you're going to have and what the bass are doing, what water temperatures do bass generally start spawning on uh, what water temperatures do the males start to go up and and make the beds for the females so they can spawn what do you do with a post spawn which can be kind of a tough time to fish so it's always a good idea to get online there's tons of articles and videos on seasonal bass fishing what to use different depths whether it's a lake with a lot of cover or an open lake like this the resources are unbelievable so i just kind of hope this helps you out it's a number of things that I do. Certainly it's not everything that can be done to find fish, but these are patterns that I have that I consistently find fish and catch them. And when I find a lake where, you know, I go on a lake that I don't know a whole lot about, I can still go back to this. And I can look at that lake, look for those points, look for those ledges, look for things that I know bass hang out at. And, of course, knowing your seasons and stuff will help you out a lot. I mean, we're in the fall, so bass are real active. Water temperature out here is about 66 degrees right now. Great water temperature for bass fishing. Pleasant day. I'm going to do some more fishing, but I wanted to stop and just kind of go over this with you uh, because I think it's a good idea. It's always good to know what areas tend to hold bass. I hope this video helps. I sure enjoy doing this. If you like it, please subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.